Hello YouTube, Skirkova here. My friend Rational Roundtable recently linked in one of his videos to a debate in which Michio Kaku upstaged his theist and atheist counterparts with a rousing and articulate defense of agnosticism. More recently, YouTuber Flowcell posted a response to my friend's video putting forward a rethinking of the map of our varying ideas about religion in the form of a two-dimensional chart, similar in structure to the Nolan chart that analyzes our political views. Where Nolan charts our views along the axes of personal freedom and economic freedom, Flowcell charts our religious beliefs along the two axes of scientific focus, or epistemological focus, and philosophical focus, or rational focus. In the interest of fairness, I've tried to include all of the terms he considered relevant to these axes. Thus is the stage set for this video, describing my reaction to all of this, and my reaction is not terribly enthusiastic. I want to say that Michio Kaku, as far as I can tell, is a brilliant scientist, and I enjoy hearing his thoughts on contemporary physical theory. But his comments in this debate are not very useful, insightful, or fair, in my opinion, and it troubles me somewhat that my friend is sympathetic to them. Firstly, Michio opens his commentary by issuing two strawman representations of both atheism and theism that are staggering in their sheer audacity. He insists that his colleagues on one side of the aisle believe with 100% certainty there is no God and that the universe has no purpose, and that on the other side they believe with that same 100% certainty that there is a God and there is a purpose. Even Richard Dawkins, who was more confrontational toward theists than I think is productive, had this to say when confronted on the topic. Well, it's hard to put a figure on it, but, but I, I, I mean, I put it as something like, you know, 99% against or something. Well, how do you know it's 99% against, say, and not 97 No, I did, you asked me to put a figure on it, and I, it, I'm not comfortable putting a figure on it. I think it's, I, I just think it's very unlikely. What? But you couldn't put a number on it? No, of course not. So it, it could would be forty-nine percent. Well, I, it would be. I mean, I, I think it's, it's, it's unlikely, but, but I, but, and it's quite far from fifty percent. How do you know? I don't know. I'm there are definitely some theists out there in the world who feel quite comfortable saying they know for sure that God exists, and there are probably some atheists out there who know for sure that there is no God. But neither group represents the participants in the scholarly debate on the topic. And in the case of atheists in particular, those who are not at least somewhat agnostic about the question are a vanishingly small demographic indeed. This is why atheists on YouTube have continually insisted that atheism is a lack of belief instead of a positive assertion. And uh, certain people who take issue with that need to realize three things. One, no one is responsible for defending a claim they're not making. Two, to insist that someone do so is a straw man argument, and three, to then tell them that they cannot use the word which describes their position is insulting and dismissive. To such people I say this, when you show me a scholarly poll which shows that more than half of self-identified atheists reject lack of belief as a definition in favor of a positive assertion, then you can tell me what the word means. I'd even settle for 50-50. Hell, I'd settle for 40-60. Atheists are not required to agree on anything, and we don't agree on much. But we stand united in defining atheism as a lack of belief and not a positive assertion. But I digress. Michio Kaku's comments are very patronizing. He mischaracterizes the entire debate just to make his position seem like some sort of reasonable middle ground when in fact the position he actually asserts, agnosticism, is compatible with both sides. It is no more a middle ground between theism and atheism than Earth is a middle ground between New York and Los Angeles. Now, Michio Kaku seems to be a deist, if I have understood his comments on the topic in other realms, and deism can be characterized as a middle ground between theism and atheism. Sort of. The problem is that deism has no clear advantage over either side, so it cannot be used so patronizingly. The public misperception of the word agnosticism, on the other hand, well, that would do nicely. I have been told numerous times upon explaining my position to someone, oh, you're not really an atheist, you're agnostic. Yes, I am agnostic, and I am also an atheist.
Now we move on to flow cells retooling of the debate, a la the Nolan chart. I'll call it the flow cell chart. Let me know, flow cell, if you take issue with that. And let me say, before we move on, that I respect what you're trying to do here. I understand that you're trying to improve the debate, and I can see why you're doing that. Now, the Nolan chart improves upon the left-right dichotomy of American politics by making room for libertarians and communists, expanding it to the point that practically anyone can find a place on the chart, even outside of American politics. It's not perfect, because it doesn't identify specific views on specific issues, and the standards by which someone is placed along one axis or the other must be adjusted from one region of the world to another. But it works for describing general political views because it identifies two distinct realms of priority which most people use in defining their political views, personal freedom and economic freedom. The flow cell chart attempts to do the same thing with religious views, improving on the atheist-theist dichotomy. I submit that this attempt fails because of several specific problems with the assumptions that it makes, which I will now explain. 1. As I explained regarding Michio Kaku's comments, agnosticism is not a position one can take distinct from either theism or atheism. In fact, the extent to which one is agnostic could be an axis all on its own. One may truly be stuck on the fence between the two, but that's not agnosticism, although such a person could be agnostic. 2. These axes are not distinct from one another to the same extent as the axes of the Nolan chart and this lack of distinction is not trivial. The scientific method itself is essentially a philosophical position. Epistemology is a philosophical term. Rationality is extremely important in science. I'm not simply saying that one could choose both. That wouldn't be a problem, and in fact is true of the Nolan chart as well. What I'm saying is that it is senseless even to distinguish between the two in this way. 3. The use of the term focus diffuses the meaning of these terms even more. William Lane Craig's views on science are, in my opinion, extremely flawed, if not downright disingenuous. But he does appeal to scientific ideas and principles in his apologetics frequently. To say that someone focuses on science or on philosophy is not to say they do it particularly well, after all. Atheists, in turn, are very willing to focus on philosophy, and in fact, the earliest known atheists were often prominent philosophers, such as Epicurus, Theodorus, Bertrand Russell, Frederick Nietzsche, and many, many others. To say either that atheists don't focus on philosophy, or that theists don't focus on science, is untrue and insulting to both groups. 4. The Nolan Chart's axes are priorities, because it is dealing with subjective opinions. Two people can be in complete agreement on substantive facts, but hold differing political views because of their differing priorities. The flow cell chart, however, deals with truth claims. What position one occupies on the flow cell chart, ignoring, for the moment, the problems previously mentioned, has much to do with what truth claims one accepts or rejects, and very little to do with subjective values. The content of one's propositional beliefs, that is, their beliefs on claims which must be either true or false, is not something you can plot on a spectrum. One may have any one of an endless combination of such beliefs. 5. A position on either one of Nolan's axes directly corresponds to a clearly defined political attitude. If you are on one end of his economic structure, you clearly must value a free market, whatever your other values are. If you are on the opposite end of that spectrum, you clearly must value the regulation of economies by some authority, whatever your other values are. This is not true of the flow cell chart. If I have a very low focus on scientific or epistemological issues, all that means is I have a low focus on scientific or epistemological issues. It doesn't tell you anything meaningful about me beyond that. A strict interpretation of the flow cell chart extrapolated from the axes would look like this. It has almost nothing to do with religion. Thanks for listening.